Well, it's finally here, my A500 Mini. I'm really excited about this because I've never actually owned an Amiga. I've never used an Amiga. In fact, my, when I went from my Commodore 64, I went straight to a 486 Windows and DOS PC. So the A500 has been out for a year now. And, well, most of you already have one. Most of you have seen it. Many know what it can do. Many have already even modified it. And let's face it, the A500 Mini isn't really an Amiga. So I might as well just roll the credits in a joke that clearly insults your intelligence. Wait, 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 wait. There is a question I can answer. And because I've never used an Amiga, let's answer the question, are these things just capitalizing on nostalgia? Or will they actually bring in new users to the platform? Let's find out. All right, A500 Mini. Let's get into this. Retro Games Up Biz. I should say this is the North American version. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference. I think the games are more or less the same. Uh, I'll, I'll look closer into it maybe uh, after I've done filming this. But uh, this is what's in, what it includes. Two-button USB mouse, eight-button USB gamepad, USB-C power supply cable. I'm really, I, I'm kind of, I think it's cool that they include a gamepad. Retro games doesn't have the greatest track record of joysticks and things like that but i definitely do get along better with a gamepad than i do with well literally any joystick on the face of the earth so let's go ahead and open this up probably something you've seen a million times before but here we go hey look looks like an a500 mini you know a miniaturized version of a commodore amiga 500 series that's pretty light looks like we got little uh pads are marked up a little bit this has been sitting around for a number of months just because i haven't been able to get around to filming it usb c power power button hdmi three usb ports considerably thinner than the uh commodore mini but i'm sure we can still do some modifications to it i've got a couple in mind yeah neat little thing quick guide tells you how to plug stuff in in a couple of different languages english german Italian. Cool. Spanish. Hey, look. I believe this is the mouse and this is the gamepad. What do you think? Let's see if we're surprised. I don't think so, though. There we go. Oh, a couple of different cables here. That's the power cord and the gamepad. Oh, this is a... That's interesting. This is a... Uh, I thought this was four separate buttons. This is actually a single piece under here. I'm just pushing on it and all four move. That actually will make it a bit more playable, I think. If you have separate buttons, it's kind of like using this to, to do directional controls. That would that'd be terrible. Menu, home. Yeah. Nifty. Yeah, standard USB-C power cord. Nothing terribly special about that. It means that was the gamepad. I'm guessing this is the mouse. Well, I guess it's an HDMI cord. And sure enough, there it is, the mouse. The micro switches. It's optical, which is excellent. I mean, why put a ball mouse on there? I've got... Now, it's interesting. I do have... I, I've backed a Kickstarter called the Tank Mouse, which is basically an Amiga-style, you know, Commodore-style mouse that's also USB, and I believe it does a 9-pin. I'd, I'd have to check on that. But looks very much like this mouse. Interesting. Yeah, test that one out. All right, looks like that's it for the box. So we'll go on to using it. Dude, power light, here we go. There we are. All right, let's go through this. Alien Breed 3D, Alien Breed. I've seen Alien Breed on Morgan Just Games channel.
paradroid. A lot of these I've never, never heard of. Simon the Sorcerer. Speedball, I've, I've seen. Morgan Just Games channel again. Supercars 2. Titus. Worms. Zool. Zool was available for DOS as well, so... Although I've never... I've played it a little bit. Just not, not a whole lot. I thought there was another one on here. Oh, Stunt Car Racer. Yeah, that one I've seen. Uh, Morgan Just Games play as well. Let's get the firmware updated. Menu. There we go. So just like on the C64, all you have to do is put the firmware on in the root folder of the thumb drive just in the in the main folder of the thumb drive and uh, it should find it as long as your thumb drive is formatted correctly so let's go ahead and update so we'll start with that there we go All right, well, yeah, here we go. Got USB media access. Let's take a look. And that is the bonus games that you can download off of the website. Home Start Game. Now I've got the WHD load folder in on this thumb drive as well. So what it's going to do, it's... Uh, from what I've read, it's going to just run that game off of the thumb drive. That's interesting. The, the drive light lights up. That's pretty cool. Yeah, workbench. Very cool. Now, I'm not, not crazy about the uh, this look... It looks like it's use, emulating a uh, CRT monitor. I'm not crazy about the lines. I'd like a clean look. But, you know. To each their own. Switch that to difficulty easy for sure. Oh, okay. Well, this is really taking full advantage of the of the controller. It's uh, you know left and right is to basically uh, strafes left and right, and the buttons left and right shoulder buttons here actually turn left and right so kind of it's that's pretty impressive you see a wall in front of you well I sure do Ooh. 
see nothing interesting. Nothing to examine here. All right. So. That's no good. I had the wrong weapon in hand. Ah, come on. Yeah, that con the controls are just really ticking me off. Left and right shoulder buttons turn left and right just don't aren't a, no good. So you can just sort of pass through objects. Ah. where I started off at. Huh. Well. All right. Home just gets out of there. And of course, there's a save feature on this. Up in the corner there, you can pick up where you left off, or you can save it. So if you press home, you can get back into it. Home will get you back out of there. Or you can save it to a, one of these four slots. Let's try F-16 Combat Pilot. Okay, looks like it's got a mouse cursor, so yeah, we'll need the mouse. That's weird how it just kind of jumps into the game. So you need the mouse for the menu. Okay, that's a little weird. menu brings up a keyboard. Well, the Y button seems to do something, but selects your weapons. Let's try something different. That seems to be a bit of a dead end. There must must be a... I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing it's a keyboard and mouse thing? I, I'm not sure. Go ahead and do Zool. I have a little bit of experience with that. I haven't played this in decades. This should be an all... This should be an all joystick game anyway, so... Yeah, 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 yeah
my goodness. I'm not sure what you gotta do to for this. That's enough of that. <laughs> yeah, that's a button masher. I tell you what. But of course, we're going to open it up. How can we not? This is Gigabyte's technology after all, and if we don't open it up and look at the technology in it, well, what's the point really? It looks like a number one screwdriver, and sure enough it is. Now, please tell me they didn't hide any other screws. I bet you they're under the feet. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Fortunate and super annoying. Just put the screws out in the open, you know? I don't want to have to replace feet. There we go. Popped it open. Little catch right there. Do we still have hidden screws? Yep, sure enough we do. Two more yet. Gigabytes technology. Opening the stuff up, avoiding warranties, so you don't have to since 2018. Should I just put that in the video or maybe maybe put that in the blooper reel? I don't know. Who knows? All right. So, oh, there's a button. Oh, really? One under the label, too? That's quite enough. So there's the button. Yeah, plenty of weights. Here's the LED lights. I'll pop that off of there. Okay, so the button, power button, it's a little lip right there. Power button sits kind of like, kind of like that. There we go. Tiny little lip there. That's how that power button sits. So when we put that back together, that's, that's how we'll have to do it. I mean, assuming I don't lose it off the end of the bench. So here we go. This is the main circuit board memory in looks like ram chips and of course processor or uh, fpga is underneath there this looks like another usb we might be able to attach into possibly maybe never know that's what i'm talking about right there let's get this to focus here there we go that'd be awesome if that if that uh is another USB because I've got it I've got an idea and if I want to do any internal USB mods and that's how I want to do it honestly so but yeah not a lot to this pretty simple as someone pointed out it's probably got less processing power than a Raspberry Pi which you know it, it doesn't matter it does the job so let me set this to the side I'll put that together a little later off camera well, let's take a look at this joypad, see what's inside it. Okay, that's, let me try a different screwdriver, because that one was trying to strip the screw out. There we go, that's got a little more bite to it. I'm not really expecting miracles out of this. Let's pop this open. A couple little holding tabs there. There we go. So yeah, the shoulder buttons, actual micro switches in that, that's, I am kind of impressed with that. But honestly, it feels like there, there are switches in this anyway. Ah, uh, not quite. <laughs> not, these are, uh, the top side is a uh, membrane, like most joy pads are, USB controller. I mean, there's not much here. Could you do switches? Eh. I mean, yeah, we could try. But honestly, you'd have to have some low profile switches. Trying to make sure I keep that in frame, huh? Yeah, you'd have to do some low profile switches on that. Looks like we've got a weight bar on here to make it feel more substantial than it is. Standoffs to hold the board up, take a little more abuse or whatever. So yeah, again, I'll put that back together. Let's try and get through the get through the last little bit of disassembly here. 
I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure that it would be worth putting switches in here. But you definitely could use this to make an adapter. Left, right, up, down. So this is the directional you know, solder pads here. So yeah, we could do, I mean, we could do a lot of the same modifications to this that we could, we could do to, that we did to the Commodore 64 joystick. So yeah, we'll set that to the side as well. Well, let's take a look. This should be pretty simple too. Pretty basic two button optical mouse. I'm almost expecting this to be sort of bog standard off the shelf type of thing. Yeah, there we go. Another another weight in there <laughs> yeah pretty pretty standard stuff honestly I, I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do to the mouse anyway or that you would want to do to the mouse it would be interesting to come back to this video and compare this to the tank mouse that should be coming hopefully soon that i backed that would be fun so what do I think about the Amiga Mini? Well, to be honest, it feels like it's missing something. Like with the Commodore 64 Mini, the, the C64, you could go into a Commodore 64 mode and type in basic and do other things, uh, open up the assembler, that type of thing. This doesn't feel anything like that. Uh, this is just like a games console for the most part. I, I feel the omission of Workbench is probably short-sighted. It, it would give the Amiga Mini more depth, more to explore than just the games. Because to me, a, an old computer, a, a, you know, even though I don't have any nostalgic feelings for this particular device, having Workbench would have given it more depth to explore. And it wouldn't just be a games machine, just like every other console out there. Now, having said that, I have spent the last couple of days digging, and I came across something called a Mini Miga, and it took me a few tries to get that pronounced correctly. However, a Mini Miga is essentially workbench for the Amiga Mini. And it works and plays and feels just like just like workbench. The only problem is is it I think I feel it's like a little bit slow. I tried a couple of games that that came with it. And there are a lot of games and tunes and all kinds of things that come with this particular project. So I tried a few things with it, and one of the games that I'm very familiar with is Pinball Dreams. I used to play it in DOS, and I also played its cousin, Epic Pinball, which is very similar. I played it from the Workbench console, the um, Mini Mega console and it played a it seemed to play just a hair slow almost like it was trying to almost like the amiga was trying to run too much and then i played it uh, off of the carousel on the amiga mini and the one in the on the on the carousel was faster and more responsive and overall a, a better experience than the one playing off of Workbench. They both worked. They both uh, were very playable. The main difference is that the one on the carousel lacked a lot of the opening and title screens that the Amini Miga version did. So it opens up with uh, 21st Century Entertainment and the whole the whole spiel that it goes through. And I remember all that from playing it in DOS. That, I feel, is missing from a lot of the games. You know, the games on the carousel, it's it, fine, okay, it jumps right into it and gets into the right into the game. But 
some of that buildup is what's missing, I feel. And so is this something to capitalize on nostalgia? I guess. But it doesn't really capitalize on the nostalgia if the game isn't complete. Part of the nostalgia is is going through the load screens and going through, for lack of a better term, a more complete game. The other part of the nostalgia is using utilities and and things that were a part of the original computer system, which Retro Games has omitted. A Mini Amiga is not the only way to get Workbench working on the Amiga Mini, but it was one of the easiest ways for me. I just downloaded it, extracted it to a flash drive, and just popped it into the machine, and it, and it ran. So does it capitalize on nostalgia? Sort of. Is it going to bring people who have never experienced the Amiga into the Amiga fold? I doubt it. Again, a lot of the Amiga games I could play on DOS. And I've heard, okay, all well, the DOS ports are terrible, or but they weren't terrible for me. It's what I played. Uh, in fact, there was one game that's available in Linux called Flight of the African Queen that was an, is an Amiga port. And it's a direct Amiga port that I can just download and run right now on my Linux computer. There are a couple of other games just like it. I honestly don't know for a fact if this is going to get nobody into the Commodore Amiga. But I think it needs a little bit more to get people into the, into the environment, into the experience of having an Amiga. Am I going to continue to play around with it? I might. But one thing I can tell you is, oh yes, there will be mods. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Morgan Just Games channel. If you don't know who that is, or you've been hiding all this time. <laughs>